Hey everyone, Redneck Brian here. Okay, the final heights are in on the Kubota. The front end is sitting approximately five inches from the ground. That's the to the uh, underside of the frame, or just back in here. And the back end to the trailer hitch is six inches, which isn't too bad. I believe I was when I first started off, I was right around uh, twelve inches in back, roughly ten to twelve. So the back I wanted it a little bit higher to give it that uh, angled look. Uh, make it look meaner and on the back I was working around a lot of different things primarily the gas tank and I had to be able to get tires underneath there so that's why I had to go with the 18s I'm going with 15s up front so not too bad if I wanted a little bit lower in the front I'd get some smaller tires but I rather use what I have on hand so so here it is pretty good it's actually it's looking really good there's a bit of frame flex, but that's to be expected after cutting that much out of the frame and welding it all back in. I wish I wouldn't have did the uh, fuck up on the frame, but uh, it's what it is. It is what it is, so not, not a huge deal. Basically, with my uh, screw up on the frame, which I did weld back together, it was approximately as, as thick as an average newer style Craftsman frame. These ones have full frames, so kind of a little bit... Uh, thicker about double the thickness of the uh, Murray's frame which if I was to take everything off that Murray it would have quite a bit of flex but uh, once the uh, pan is back on here and all bolted in place that's going to help take uh, take away the flex as well it's not really flexing too bad it should be okay uh, it's just a little bit of frame flex also it could be the back tires are low and that's where I'm feeling the flex from the tires are, uh, have a little bit of give to them but uh, the only hard part now will be is uh, hooking up the front steering before the uh, rod came in from the top and I believe it went to the back one at the bottom. So, But now the, the top is now the very bottom and I don't really want it to go in there because it's going to end up rubbing because that's even lower to the ground. That's, that is, let me feel here, <laughs> do that uh, to the uh, hook up here at the bottom, it's only one and a half inches off the ground. Like, that's practically touching the ground. Unless I can figure out a different way to come off of, put my steering off of right around here. Uh, see, there's a stopper right here. If I can figure out, we can weld a piece right here across, out, and uh, come off of right here, that would actually line up my steering a little bit better. So I may end up having to do that and uh, cut off this piece on the bottom. Uh, that's that's pretty low to the ground. Um, that's low enough that it's gonna it's gonna rub if I go over bumps. So I may end up having to cut that off, even cut it off, br uh, bring it around to the top, re-weld it on, and uh, figure out from there how I'm gonna do the steering. I also had the option of putting a Craftsman front end in. Here's the Craftsman one. This is the one I actually got the tires off of. The issues with this one. Yeah, it's a it's a cast iron, but the issues with this one are, look at the angle, and look how thin these tubes are. That one on the Kubota is so much thicker and so much better quality. Um, but basically, if you think about it, you're going to be hanging weight off of here. Basically off these C-clips right here, or whatever's in there. Yeah, it's a C-clip. But basically off that C-clip, you're going to be hanging the entire front end weight off of that. So... Let me show you back on the Kubota. The tires there I'm selling to a guy at work. On the Kubota, on the other hand, it's a greasable front end. There is a grease fitting at the back now. It would have been at the front, now it's at the back. And on the bottom, it's a full welded piece. The actual whole rod is actually welded right in there. That's why they give you a grease fitting. They're not, uh, they're serviceable by greasing them but they're not serviceable by uh, being able to re replace these spindles. And these spindles are the same size for going out to the tire, but it's solid. On the Craftsman ones, they taper down. So this is a much better front end. Also, if you look here, this angle here is nowhere near as big as the Craftsman's angle. So I think even if the Craftsman one was in here upside down, it'd probably be even lower to the ground. But having six inches in the back, and five inches up at the front, it's not that bad. Like I said, I still want this thing to be somewhat capable. So, so looking at that now, that should actually work out pretty good. Putting the uh, 
putting the steering piece on the top, basically clean this up right up here, get a good weld right here, even drill it and bolt it in as well as, as for some insurance. But the stoppers still work. That's the maximum steering right there. I don't think I'll be turning that far, but uh, that's the maximum turning on the steering right there. It's a pretty tight turn. So, these tires are not secured at all. Another thing I liked about the uh, Craftsman front end, it uses C-clips to hold the tires on. I don't really know what's stronger, C-clips or the pin that actually goes through the axle. I imagine the uh, C-clip would be a bit stronger, but I, I could be wrong. So, anyways, that's that's what it's looking like looking at uh, for now. The tie rod is fine, the right, right right where it is. I checked it even at full angle. It's not going to hit the frame, and if it does hit the frame, it's just going to be a bit of a stopper, anyways. So it won't be a big deal. So if you remember, the front frame bolts right into here. It comes back to about roughly here uh, for the for the hood mounts. I was thinking about sticking the hood on here, but uh, just for mock-up, but there's really no point. I want to get the steering done, and then I'll put the hood on and see what it looks like. So, most likely, when I do this here, I'm going to weld the piece on, and I'm going to have to extend out this rod a little bit anyways. So it's not, not a terrible deal. Um, let's extend that rod out a little bit to reach over towards the front. I'm just hoping when I bolt it in, I'll have enough clearance. That's, I just noticed that now. Uh... I may have to weld a block and then weld the uh, piece on top. I'll have to figure it out. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Because uh, right here, you got no clearance between here and the I beam, the I beam front end. So I either have to take it from the bottom and angle it upwards, like similar to what the Craftsman's do, or relocate that bracket there to the top side. If I can get it in, if I can get the mount into here, which the Craftsman one will fit right in there, but again, the bolt, the bolt's going to be practically touching the ground. Uh, and I'll, I will do it that way, and then I'll angle it up to there. But I uh, imagine the less angles you have in there, obviously, it will be better. So I'll have to figure out how, I, how I'm going to have to do this and uh, make it work. So if anyone has any suggestions, again, like always, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll talk to everyone later. Please keep it redneck like always, and uh, don't get your antlers sucking your steering wheel. And here is Miss Shania.